Hi, my name is Malika. I'm from the biology department at UNC Greensboro, and I work in a plant space biology lab. So when talking about space travel, one of the main issues is that astronauts have a limited supply of food and oxygen. So our main goal in this lab is to help support long-term space missions by providing plant varieties that are suitable for growing in space. So this is really important because plants can provide fresh food, oxygen, and psychological benefits for astronauts. So our current project is called Analysis of Plant Gravitropism via Kleiner Rotation Studies. Um, so to, to give a brief overview of gravitropism, gravitropism is the plant's response uh, mechanism to gravity. So because of uh, gravitropism on Earth, plant shoots grow against the gravity vector and the plant roots grow towards gravity. But in space, since there is no effective uh, gravity vector, this is called microgravity. Um, so plants experience what is called gravitational stress. Um, this usually causes their productivity and growth to decrease. So uh, our immediate goal in this lab is to find Arabidopsis thaliana genotypes that are more resistant to gravitational stress. And we use Arabidopsis thaliana because it's a great model plant, uh, which has edible counterparts such as radishes and cabbages, and it has its whole genome sequenced. So to go over the methods, uh, we have experimented with 150 wild types of genotypes, um, Arabidopsis thaliana. And so first we surface sterilize the seeds and those seeds are sowed in a nutrient gar in Petri dishes. Um, then half of those plates are placed on a 2D clinostat, which is this device on the right, um, which is a wheel-like device that rotates constantly to simulate microgravity, which uh, basically works by confusing the plant as to which way the gravitational vector is. Um, here we can see on the right an example of how the plants react under gravitational stress uh, simulated by the 2D clinostat. Um, and so that is how we do our treatment group. And then the control group is just the plates, half of the plates grown vertically. Um, so after the seven day period of these treatments, um, the plates are scanned and um, they are analyzed for their shoot length, their main root length, their uh, number of secondary roots, uh, total root length and number of root pairs. Um, and then we use a t-test to find the differences between the treatment group and the control group for each genotype. Uh, so on the right is a sample graph of the results that we obtained by comparing uh, in A, you can see the shoot length comparison, and then B, total root length, and C, the number of root hairs, just looking at 17 genotypes. Um, and so these graphs were made by assuming that the uh, control group of each genotype had 100% growth. And then for each genotype, uh, the treatment group, we estimated the percent difference from the control to get these graphs. Um, so moving on to a summary of the results, so far we found two genotypes um, out of the 53 genotypes that we've analyzed. Uh, two genotypes, CIBC5 and Columbia0, which showed no difference or better growth in their uh, different growth parameters. Uh, under Kleiner rotation. So uh, these genotypes may have potential gravitational stress resistance. So they'll be our prime candidates for future uh, space, space flight experiments with plants. Um, so in the long run, these studies will help us identify several genotypes to test on space flight missions. And uh, later we want to identify genes uh, that are involved in developing these gravitational stress resistance in plants by the genome-wide association studies. Uh, and then the, finally, these uh, genes can be checked or manipulated to produce uh, plant varieties that uh, will be able to grow well in space flight missions, um, microgravity, or in reduced gravity, such as in on the moon or Mars. That's all. Thank you.